Hello from Jonathan and from me. Welcome to Friday's Anglia Tonight. First tonight, the security scare that's caused major disruption at one of the region's airports on one of its busiest days of the year. It happened at Luton Airport this morning. A plane was evacuated and five people given medical treatment after a chemical, thought to be a cleaning fluid, leaked from a bag. Well, 30 firefighters were called to the scene along with police, ambulance crews and hazardous materials experts. Now, baggage and check-in facilities were closed, causing major delays. Our correspondent Neil Bradford's at Luton Airport. He joins us now. Neil, this is the last thing the air airport the passengers wanted, particularly on today of all days. Yes, I guess no one could have imagined their holidays would begin like this and all it seems because of the actions of one careless passenger who tried to take a prohibited chemical on board an aircraft. Around 60,000 people are expected to use the airport today. Uh, many of them would have been delayed as a result of this security alert. And it was at the airport's busiest time, around 7.30 this morning, when the full emergency plan was put into operation. As firefighters, police and paramedics rushed to the scene, check-in was suspended for all flights. They were minutes from taking off for Portugal when the passengers on board this plane were caught up in this rather unusual security alert. Just metres away at the airport's baggage handling area, an unknown chemical had leaked from a bag, contaminating luggage loaded on to flight ZB56 to Faro. Five people thought to be baggage handlers were treated for symptoms including sore eyes and breathing difficulties. A sixth person was taken to hospital for an unrelated condition. After more than two hours on the tarmac, the 170 passengers were eventually led from the Airbus onto waiting buses. Throughout the drama, the runway remained open, but all check-in desks were closed. These pictures taken inside the terminal show the backlog it caused for much of the day. There was massive queues. Uh, they dealt with it quite well, to be honest. Um, there's a delay of about an hour. I hope we just go straight in, because we heard about it a couple of hours ago, so hopefully it's cleared up by now. No. What do you think is going to greet you when you get in the terminal? I don't know, we'll wait and see. Many passengers were unaware of the chemical alert, which began just before 7.30 this morning. The airport security fence shielding them from the emergency services sent to the scene. Well, it's now more than three hours since the start of this security alert. It's all but over now. The plane remains on the tarmac while firefighters decontaminate the cargo hold. Firefighters have boarded the plane wearing breathing apparatus and removed all of the luggage. Police have arrested a man on suspicion of taking an illegal substance on board an aircraft. It's thought it may have been a five-litre container of powerful cleaning fluid. It's now been sent for analysis. Aviation experts say the airport could not afford to take any chances. This item that this gentleman was carrying seems to have been a cleaning fluid of some sort, uh, but that could be uh, uh, present a, a toxic risk uh, in uh, the pressurised tube that an aeroplane is. So these sorts of things are, are on the prescribed list. You're simply not allowed to take them. There's no suggestion today's events are terrorism-related, but more the actions of a careless passenger. So, Neil, did the passengers on board that Portugal flight ever make it? Yes, better late than never, I guess. They finally touched down in Faro just before 4 o'clock UK time. They eventually took off here from Luton at 1.25 in that Airbus A320 they boarded this morning after it had been decontaminated. And I understand that plane is now on its way back to Luton, where it will land later this evening. And, Neil, how's it looking there now? Well, check-in desks in the terminal reopened around lunchtime, but the delays have been felt right through the delay. Some are quite small, others quite significant. The airport says things will be back to normal uh, by tomorrow. But, of course, this is the start of the school holidays, so pretty much busy everywhere. Stansted Airport is expecting around 300,000 passengers through the terminal there this weekend. Things running OK at the moment, as they are at Norwich Airport. On the road, this was the scenes on the M1, not far from here, just a few minutes ago, running pretty smoothly apart from the uh, 50 mile an hour roadwork zone. Also running quite smoothly on the M11 in Cambridgeshire, but I'm afraid if you're heading south out of the region on the A1, it's not looking so good. And of course, the M25 is pretty bad. Uh, no problems reported on the railway. And if your preferred method of transport is the sea, the ferries from Harwich to Holland are all departing on time.
Neil, thank you very much indeed for that update. Uh, well, there could be more disruption for passengers elsewhere this summer. Workers at Stansted Airport are being balloted on whether to take industrial action after managers offered them a 1.5% pay rise. Firefighters, engineers and security staff at Stansted are taking part in the vote, which has been called by the Unite Union. Stansted's owners, BAA, have offered a 1% pay increase plus a further half a percent if staff agree to changes to their sickness agreement. The ballot will close on the 12th of August, we're told. Now, it's emerged today that a paedophile from Essex was involved in the criminal case that today saw the James Bulger killer, John Venables, jailed for downloading and distributing child pornography. The Old Bailey heard how Venables made online contact with paedophile Leslie Blanchard from Chelmsford by posing as an abusive mother of an eight-year-old daughter. Well, Serena Sandy joins us now from our newsroom. Uh, Serena, this was a dreadful, horrible web of deceit, wasn't it? Well, yes, it was. And, of course, John Venables is infamous for the part that he played in the murder of two-year-old James Bulger in 1993. The toddler was abducted from a shopping centre in Merseyside and was beaten to death on a railway line. At the time, Venables was aged just 10. He was given a life sentence but released in 2001 with a new identity after it was feared that there would be threats to his life. The 27-year-old was recalled to prison in February after being caught with images of children as young as two on his home computer. Today, he appeared at the Old Bailey. Watching proceedings was the mother of James Bulger, Denise Fergus. However, only the judge, Mr Justice Bean, was allowed to see Venables. He pleaded guilty via a video link to downloading 57 indecent images of children and was sentenced to two years in jail. He also admitted distributing 42 images in February 2008 to convicted paedophile Leslie Blanchard, who's from Chelmsford. And a laptop that was seized from Blanchard proved to be invaluable in the case against Venables. In a series of messages between the pair, Venables offered to sell access to his imaginary daughter. Blanchard was given a three-year community order last October after pleading guilty to possessing, making and distributing indecent images of children. Today, Essex police say that he's being managed by police and probation officers. All right, Serena, thank you for that. Now then, there are fresh warnings tonight about the dangers of campfire.